No BS. That's right. We're giving away the No BS six-pack formula right now for this episode. So this is a workout program for your core to develop the muscles and make them more visible even at higher body fat percentages. Here's how you can win free access to that program. I want you to leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Now, here's what I want you to talk about. In the intro, we talk about a conspiracy theory around a patent that Justin found on the internet. Give us your ideas. Research this patent. Tell us what your conspiracy theory is. The winning conspiracy theory will win free access to the No BS six-pack formula. But you also have to subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. One more thing. We're running a promotion right now. We actually bundled MAPS Anabolic and the No BS six-pack formula together and made them only $59.99. That's a huge savings. Go check it out. Head over to mapsoctober.com. All right, here comes the show. Hey, congratulations, Adam. Congratulations? Yeah, dude. On what? Taco, was it National Taco Day or whatever? <laughs> <That's racist. laughs> what? Racist as fuck, taco. bro. No. Why, 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 why is this would you look at, at me Adam? for Taco yeah. Tuesday? Huh? huh? I thought you liked If tacos. it was like Spaghetti Wednesday and I said something yeah. to you, that'd be so racist. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like Potato Friday <laughs> no, or something. Yeah. You, you know. love tacos. I, yeah, see. I, yeah. I do like tacos. All right, then. So do I. So do I. No, uh, you know what? <laughs> you know why I'm saying that? Uh, so I guess it's national. I didn't even know this was a thing. National. Is that? Okay, this is like a. Every day is national. Yes, something. This, something. Is a, this is a trend that started in the last, I don't know, five years or so. I know. Where the, every day is a national something day. Well, are you there any days left podcasting day the other that day. don't have something attached to it? You like, know what? It, what are those days? You know what it does? All the other like national days don't mean anything now because everything's a national something day. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyway, anyway, I'm not going to argue this because I'm happy there's National Taco Day because tacos are amazing. Oh, yeah. But the reason why I'm bringing that up is I went it's on my- on a Tuesday. I went on my Butcher Look Box um, they, tacos? account- and it said on there, you guys never do this. You got to go there. Listen to me. Listen to what I'm saying. Yeah. Go to your butcher box account mm. every month before your your box comes, right? And check that every month they have new like deals and packages, and they'll add new products and they'll have great uh, prices or whatever. So this time they have like a taco night package that they're selling. I can see what it looks like. Oh, so wow. it's just like ground meat or like chicken like what was that like? two pounds of ground beef three and a half pounds of boneless pork butt and three pounds nah. of boneless chicken thighs mm -hmm. so and that's eight <clears throat> plus pounds of meat for 50 bucks wow Dang. Doug's a big son but guy too he is yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah, watching yeah, actually I was watching a barbecue show with my daughter uh -huh. and uh, she didn't know that <laughs> that pork butt was a thing so like the guy throws a big piece of, of meat on the you know grill and it's yeah. like pork butt and she slapped was, that pork butt she on was her. cracking up dude she's like pork butt I'm like you want to guess what part of the pig that's from <laughs> it's dude. actually from the shoulder why would they call it pork no, butt? See, now I'm <laughs> yeah. so gotcha. <laughs> Hold on a second. Jeez. Who's the smart PR guy that said, this is a shoulder. Let's name it something worse. I pork don't know. Butt. That's this isn't brilliant marketing. Make or any, more sexy. Make any sense. Well, what if that was something that was more desirable back then when they named it? Pork butt? Mm -hmm. You think so? Then shoulder? Mm. I don't know. You're right. Maybe way. It was to the black mirror guy. Maybe. But, huh? Uh, well, butts, oh, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure it's pretty universal that butts are fatty, so I'm sure that people would think that, right? Yeah. But so maybe it was a more desirable cut back in the day. Yeah, but isn't it also universal that butts poop? Okay. But no, holes. Yeah. Huh? Holes, but holes. <laughs> yeah. But butts don't really poop. No, but still, it's the whole, <laughs> it's the think, whole area. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to, I bought some, so whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I what were lost you, my you were reading something and you were giggling. Oh yourself, yeah. Like, no, yeah. I wanted to read this to you guys. Hold on. So, uh, our, our good buddy, James Smith, who, uh, um, uh, Joe DeFranco's partner sent this to me the other day. So uh, he obviously like is into the same stuff as I am because he'll send me some stuff every now and then. I'm like, how's this guy know? He must he must read my my me or memes or the things that I send. Mm -hmm. He sends me over this thing. It's called A Professor Explains Marketing to MBA Students. So this professor explains marketing to these students that like it like at the same way you would be picking up a girl, right? So this is like how he explains. So he uses that as the context. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> you see gor a, gor a gorgeous girl at a party. You go up to her and say, I'm very rich. Marry me. That's called direct marketing. <laughs> Number two, you're at a party with a bunch of friends and you see a gorgeous girl. One of your friends goes up to her and and and, and is pointing over you and says, he's a very rich man. You should marry him. That's advertising. Number three, you see a gorgeous girl at a party, you go up to her and you get her telephone number. The next day you call her and say, hi, I'm very rich, marry me. That's telemarketing. 
Four, you're at a party and you see a gorgeous girl. You get up and straighten your tie. You walk up to her. <clears throat> you pour her a drink. You open the door of her car for her. You pick up her bag after she drops it. You offer her a ride, then, then ask her, by the way, I'm very rich. Will you marry me? That's public relations. Five, you're at a party and you see a gorgeous girl. She walks up to you and says, you're a very rich guy. Can you marry me? That's brand recognition. Six, you see a <laughs> yes. gorgeous girl at a party. You go up to her and say, I'm very rich. Marry me. She gives you a nice hard slap on your face. That's customer feedback. Seven, you see a gorgeous girl at a party. You go up to her and say, I'm very rich. Marry me. She introduces you to her husband. That's a demand and supply gap. Eight, you see a gorgeous girl at a party. You go up to her and before you say anything about... <clears throat> Uh, say anything, another person comes up to you and asks her, I'm very rich. Will you marry me? And she goes, <clears throat> and she goes with him. That's comp uh, that's competition eating into your market share. Nine, you see a gorgeous girl at a party, you go up to her, and before you can say, I'm very rich, marry me, your wife arrives. <laughs> that's restrictions from entering new markets. <laughs> wow. That's actually really smart. <laughs> it is hella smart. <laughs> that is Imagine that was your professor, like how engaged you would be in that class. That's great. Mm. Isn't that funny? My, my kid has a, a teacher who, um, I guess he's an amputee, right? I don't remember what class he teaches, but my, my son says he's hilarious because he makes jokes and he'll use his arm, you know, or his, amput you know, his amputated arm as part of the jokes, or he'll post up memes that are current to teach lessons. And he's like, dude, I love this class so much. I learn did so you much. Guys, did engaging. you guys have very many teachers like that? I did. I just, maybe that's part of what my, my I had like two and I really. remember them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I literally had like one. Doug, you, what do you, you had, did you have very many? Not many, a couple. I mean, yeah, and most of the time these professors, this, this was in university. I had a, a law class and this guy was actually a practicing attorney. And he'd talk about his active cases. It was very fascinating. Yeah, that would be great. And then I had a tax attorney as a tax professor, and he was actually a uh, intellectual property tax attorney. And he talked about all these authors and you know, big celebrity type people he represented and the type of royalties they were making and things like that. He made it actually interesting. Yeah, I, it's so no. important to do that. Oh, you know, this might be a naive question, but do do they have like at universities where students rank the teachers and and star them like a Yelp review and there, stuff like that? There so, are there are uh, places yeah, that teachers, definitely do that. Yeah, that teachers get reviewed. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, however, the the teachers that get sought out are the easy ones, and kids will actually say that. So, no. like, easier class harder class or whatever. Oh, yeah. And so then kids will teach, you know, they'll, they'll want the class that's yeah. easier to, to pass. And no, the like only that. enjoyable class I had was when we had this kid in there who had Tourette's and <laughs> it made <laughs> every single class amazing. Yeah. It had nothing to do with the teacher. <laughs> you know, I Justin's sat right behind <laughs> him and you just know, and he was about to go off. Yeah. Oh, wow. ah. Then he'd say something super outrageous and offensive, and we would just die. I didn't oh. have I didn't have a teacher like this. Like I I, I can think of one or two. You teachers. Had, thought you had an English teacher. That, I did. That, so she oh. impacted me positively. So yeah. I, I'm not saying that I never had a teacher that pack, impacted me positively. Like she she definitely did. Like she encouraged me uh, different than like almost any other teacher. I told you guys with writing and stuff, right? Yeah. Which is grammatically I'm terrible. But uh, she thought the way that I could convey my thought was really good, and so she put me in advanced English. Uh, that was the only teacher, though, that I connected with like that. The rest, I, I ne and I never had anyone did like creative stuff like that or found creative ways to get us to learn. I had two. Mm -hmm. I, there was the one I told you guys about. I think I said on the podcast that uh, Arm wrestled me in front of class, and the bet was if he beat me, then I had to come to class every day, and if, if I won, then I could continue cutting class. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he beat me, and so I, I showed up, and it was really it was I, I respected the guy. It was funny. Then I had another teacher. This is only two. I had another teacher who encouraged us to debate in class. It was psychology class, and he did this thing where he would pick a topic, and we would have to debate one side of the the issue, and then we'd have to switch and debate the other side. And he encouraged arguing. It was okay if we raised our voices. Of course, we had to be respectful. Yeah. And he let us argue, and then the class would – the way that it started was, was the rest of the class would show of hands – which side they agree with or which side they already disagree with before we would argue. Yeah. And the goal of the of the debate was not to see, you know, how many people agree with you or not. It was to see how many change. people you could change. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was so impactful for me um, as a kid. I thought it was so brilliant that he let us do that. So it was you know, What really are those cool. debates called uh, that are called? Monk they, debates? Monk. Yeah, monk debates. You still watch those or have you seen I haven't, those? I, not you know, in a long time. I yeah, forgot I was, about that. I got into that for a while. Yeah, for a minute you got me into it too. I hadn't watched any in a, in a while now. You know what I like about that is debating is different than the kind of debating that we tend to see on TV, which is uh, who can make the best soundbite and who can do the zingers. Yeah. 
real debate is there's there's like rules and there's more you, you have to have more longer facts time, longer it's usually super deep and philosophical you know yeah. they're trying to like solve problems that they know like you can't really solve they, they also do that what you just said that i think is really interesting how they they everybody votes before the debate starts so yeah so see, it's not about yeah. who who has yeah. more people on it's how many people's minds did you change right yeah. because it's easy to to rile up your the people that already yeah agree right with if you. it's already 60 40 and then it ends 60 40 it wasn't that great of a debate yes right? you know what i'm saying but if it was 60 40 and then all of a sudden it flipped to 70 30 or 50 50 after that like obviously somebody moved some people in fact if okay so if you one of the reasons why i like politics is if you back out and i know people are always like when i say, say i like politics like are you crazy <sighs> I don't like politicians. Presidential debates are horrendous. I, yeah, I like the science of politics because they're they're really they've studied human psychology. And what you'll notice is when there are debates within the party. So let's say it's a you know it's a primary. So who's going to win the 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 nominee for the Democrats? Who's going to win the nomination for Republicans? The debate is all about who can rile up the base more. Mm. Then when they go to the the big national debate where it's the Democrat versus the Republican. Now what they're trying to do is maintain their base but change the minds of the undecided voters and the debates change. And you can see they all of a sudden become more moderate and they start to change kind of their messaging a little bit. Whereas when it's in the primaries, it's like who could be the most extreme? Who could be the most you know extreme on their side? Yeah, yeah. Very fascinating. Yeah. Very fast. Anyway, speaking of problems solved and stuff, I wanted to tell you guys. So I, obviously I'm not going to give this person's name because this is private information, but somebody we all know very closely – heard our episode uh, with Dr. Rand and went over to mphormones.com to get an assessment. So this person's healthy, they work out, and I'm friends with them. We talk back and forth all the time. And they, they've they been telling me how they just don't feel like they used to and their energy is kind of like whatever. And so I said, okay. And because they do everything, most things right, I said, this might be a good option to get assessed. So go there, get assessed, whatever. Anyway, he went. This was like two months ago. Uh -huh. Went, got a full assessment, and there were a couple things that they could optimize uh, with, you know, through medical means. So he decided, because he talked to Dr. Rand, he said, you know, I'm going to give this a shot and see if it makes a difference in my quality of life. He went through, has done it. This is now week four, and he's messaging me and he's like, dude, I have, he's like, I had no idea. <laughs> he's like, my quality of life is so much yeah. better than it was before. And there's nothing extreme. I'm not, I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to go over the specifics. Right, right. But nothing extreme. They just optimized a few things. And this gentleman is in his late 50s. And he's like, I feel, he's like my energy for work and energy Testosterone's for an amazing hormone, dude. It's crazy. It is. Yeah. It really is. But there's much more to that. Because uh. they look at your free testosterone. They look at your estrogen. They I know, but what they're manipulating is the testosterone though, right? They look at all those other indicators, but the thing that they give you is testosterone. Or what they'll do is, let's say, because this has happened to some people, their testosterone's fine, but they have a high degree of it that is bound, so it's not free. Mm. So in essence, it's like having low testosterone. Right. And then what they do is they go and they try to free up more testosterone through other means. Oh, interesting. So then what you're doing is you're, you're taking that bound testosterone, figuring out is that make HCG? It is that what you would use for that? Or no, you, do I you think know? no. Uh, Arimidex is one of the things oh, that they'll use, but okay. there's some other stuff that they'll that they'll work with. I thought well. Arimidex was just an, uh, an estrogen blocker. No, it uh, prevents the conversion of yeah. Testosterone but it also to frees up testosterone. I believe it, it, it has an uh, effect there. Oh, so uh, this now again, this is not my. I, this it's way more complex than the way I'm making it sound. Okay, yeah. But uh, I like hearing that. You know, from no, someone who's already healthy. You know, it's one thing if you're not healthy and your hormones are off and then you go and try and get you know medical treatment it's like well let's see what you could do now you know health in a healthy way i think i'm up to 10 family and friends that i've introduced to them already really yeah and every the 100 percent feedback has been like amazing yeah I, what i'm most assessment this week uh you know with courtney so we're gonna see how that goes so that's what i was gonna say what i'm most interested in is, is women yes mm -hmm. yeah how are how Me are too. women I have, I have two that are women so eight of them are guys especially and two are women. thyroid and everything else like getting all these hormones balanced too and like figuring out like you know the the sort of basis of, of where to go from there is going to be super helpful what's interesting about this this topic is obviously your lifestyle so your hormones are a reflection of other things right so they can be a reflection of your sleep or your stress the or, car you drive huh 
Party drive? <laughs> yeah. Actually, I have, a, I have a really funny a correlation there. There is. No, there's actually, they did some, uh, I was reading this morning, I was reading uh, God Sod, right? I was going through his book and they talked about, um, and I thought of Sal right away because he's like, I don't care about car or drive, whatever, right? But there is actually a direct connection to uh, like, and they did all those studies with a, they took a, uh, a big group of men. They had them drive uh, like a Porsche 911, and they had them drive like a, a beat up Ford Fiesta. Is this like some compensating sort of study? No, it actually in it be, because, and I imagine it's the confidence that it builds in you when you drive that mm. car, and you, especially when you drive in public. So they drove it in like country roads. They drove it in public. Oh wow! I was just gonna ask. And so, they and they and so it, it's not about the fast car. Well, being no, exciting. the fast car automatically be by yourself on country roads still raises testosterone okay. levels it raises even more testosterone when you are actually in when public areas yeah and then compared to the ford fiesta like low it actually lowered testosterone levels oh, so yeah. and in addition I to that the that. opposite of, the opposite sex perceived the 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 same attractive man in a ford fiesta versus a porsche 911 far more attractive in that vehicle wow so not only does it increase testosterone in men it also the, well, the opposite, second part's obvious yeah well, right we've known that for there. we've known yeah. that since cars were invented i know yeah. but i uh what's interesting to me is i would love to see if those effects last or if it's a temporary effect, and then if it, then if it oh, goes back I imagine down. it's a temporary effect, but I imagine it's also compounding too, right? I would think that if you're uh, all getting in that car every single day and you're driving that, it probably maintains your levels relatively higher than the person who's getting in the Ford Fiesta. Yeah. What every I would like day. to ask, what I would like take to, it away, how quickly do you drop? Yeah, yeah and yeah. I would I would also like to ask him um, if like because there's cause and effect, but also do men with higher testosterone tend to want to drive? you know, flashier cars or cars mm. that are faster. So, you know, Oh, I imagine that this was a completely different. Yes. Like, right. Like they, they forced the people. But I'm wondering those things. how, like what other effect, you know, if there's also the cause and effect from the, reverse. that's interesting. Yeah. I wonder if you, if you had lower testosterone, you would gravitate to wanting to drive that to make you feel naturally better. Right. So let's say that's true. It could so be let, that. let's say, take me for example, right. When I went through low testosterone, like, I, you know, I'm trying to think, was I, did I want to go take the Camaro out down Cannery Row or down, mm. you know, so I could feel that? Because that feels good. You drive down there, people yeah. are taking pictures of the car and stuff like that. And I'm sure that that made me feel good. I don't recall feeling like that. You know, I don't remember being like, oh, I want to go take my car out. Yeah, testosterone is really reactive. It's a reactive hormone. Mm -hmm. It's it, it like you can make it, like thoughts can make it go up and down. Winning a sporting event make it go up and yeah. down. Yeah. Uh, you know, speaking in front of in, in public can make it go up and down. And what I was saying is, I can't imagine having high testosterone driving a Prius. It's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> impossible. Unless you, yeah, yeah, soup it up or something. Yeah, it, negative. And what I was saying is that you know because your life your hormones are a reflection of your lifestyle. Obviously, you want to change your lifestyle to make them optimal. But there's also this other like double edged sword where there's also a quality of life that's not achieved or that can be achieved by optimizing. So it's like this balancing act, okay? Yes, I can optimize my life to try and perfect my hormone levels, but the fact that they're low is also just decreasing the quality, my quality of life. I don't sure. feel as good. I'm more depressed. And testosterone for men and women. Boy, is it connected to uh, anxiety, depression, drive. It's a feel good hormone, yeah. you know, whether you, whether you, whether we like it or not. It's just yeah. just kind of the way it is. Very yeah. interesting. Speaking of testosterone, boy, you guys, uh, you just reminded me of this guy. I think I might have brought this up a long time ago. Bob Munden. Do you guys know who that was? Have I ever brought him up before? Mm -mm. Doug, I sent you From Munden. I, Munden. I texted you a YouTube video of this guy, and I I might have talked about him before. It's one of the most fascinating things I've ever seen. In my entire life, and this guy was—he's the, the, the called the fastest draw in the world. So um, maybe you have brought this. Up oh before. yeah, maybe not on the podcast though. So he's, okay, he, with, with his pistol, like he just yeah, and nobody's ever matched Wild West. Kinda. Nobody's ever matched this guy. Yeah, I think I've seen videos of this guy, and he he passed away. I think like eight years ago, mm -hmm. but I somebody sent this to me, and I forgot all about it. I watched the video. This is an old video. It's not doctored or whatever. I can't believe somebody can move this fast with a. This is a revolver, and it's a. a uh, you have to cock it back in order to fire. Oh yeah, it's I too bad. This. He'd I have been guy before. a serious legend, you know, back in Wild West days. That's true, Doug. If you go to like minute one, like one fifty eight, that's when he actually demonstrates the speed at which he he shoots his gun. I mean, watch this, watch this, right and here. the accuracy too. Oh, right? accurate! Look, boom. Boom. that's it. 
Did you catch that? Yeah. Dude. Wow. That doesn't make any sense. And you'll hit. Has he ever shot his foot going that fast? I mean, and it's, again, it's not, uh, what is it, single action. You have to cock up. This is an old school yeah. handgun. It's yeah. like a simultaneous I mean, what I think this pull. highlights more than anything else is just the how amazing, like, muscle memory is and stuff like that. The Like, his he's repeated that so many times that he has that timing down so perfect. So if you watch... Well, the, to be accurate and pull that. Yeah, and there's videos of this guy yeah, give it a where try. you'll I'll have right three or try, four okay? balloons okay. in front of him. Okay. So what you just saw was okay. one shot. You can see him shoot three, four, five times, and it, it literally oh. looks like the, the can't, like they sped Hot it up. I mean, this sense. might that sound like a dumb good. analogy, but you should, have you that paid attention to your son when he plays video games? I mean, that's, and then tried to do what those kids can do now? can't. Yeah, it's crazy okay. what the if you're watching their their fingers, you mm -hmm. know, play and what they're doing and stuff like that, and all the I mean, I remember the the evolution of of like first first player or first shooter games, and then uh, like Madden and like I part it was like I was right at the like mid twenties, and it was starting to play a little less and less video games, and I remember that was what kind of like sealed the deal for me was it just got so crazy complex that you had to put in hours and hours and hours of practice yeah. to even be okay, to not get your ass whooped by some 12-year-old online. You had to put in just that because there was so many moving pieces oh, going at once. I peaked at uh, License to Kill uh, 007. <laughs> that was it. That was it, man. That was my <laughs> max. That was my prime. And then after that, it was just like, I can't. Yeah, yeah it's just because it, requi it requires an unbelievable amount of practice to have that muscle memory. No, you're right, because uh, uh, my, my niece and nephew play on consoles, so like PlayStation and mm -hmm. Xbox. My son oh, doesn't like computer. consoles. He uses a PC. And it's very different. And mm. so I'll sometimes we'll go if we visit family and they have a console. My son will play, and he's like, "I hate this. I need to be on the PC," and vice versa. They, the, my niece and nephew, like, don't like to be on the PC because they're so trained. Yes, for the specific app. And you're right. You watch their fingers move, and you're like, "What the hell?" Yeah, it's it's, it's wild. I mean, you think about it. That's the old West version of that. You know what I'm saying? Like we didn't have, <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have that shit back we then. We repurposed that skill. It is. Computer. It's the same that's, skill. Like when you talk about what's going on with the brain and thought. what's going on with with your your hand eye coordination, it's like the same thing. You're not thinking. Yeah, it's completely reactive. It's, yeah, yeah, it's automatic. Yeah, hundred percent. That's wild. All right. Yeah. Speaking of technology, we got to talk about what's happening right now with uh, the biggest social media giants. What is going yeah, on? Yeah, seriously, it's been I all fucked up the last couple. It's days. been down, and uh, yeah, people are just leery. Like I heard whims of even like Zuckerberg selling stock. So I don't know if that's true. What? Or not. Yeah. Okay. So there's okay. two things going on. One, they had one of the I think their their first or their biggest worldwide outage. So worldwide, Facebook and Instagram were down. So did it get hacked or is this some kind of like I thought I internal heard it got, issue? I heard that I, they, they froze it because they're like being investigated by their... their, their, their no, they, they no? were saying it was something else, I think, internal. Yeah, a bunch of there's all kinds all of things well, happening. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know what to believe. It's like bad internet. Well, here's why Cloudy was, day. Here's yeah. why it was crazy. Well, first off, a, a company like that being down for that long worldwide costs... I think it cost them... 200 and something thousand dollars every second or something ridiculous. It's like some ridiculous amount of money that Facebook was losing. Ooh, you should look that up. That's an interesting... Because yeah, How much th did Facebook That's all I thought about yesterday. All yeah. I thought about yesterday was what ads are not being spent on Facebook right now? So how many yeah, businesses... did this really hurt them or did this bring more attention to them again? No, bro. No. This had to you know hurt. I mean? This, this had them. to hurt. Because it also... It had to hurt so. them and it had to hurt a lot of businesses that use Facebook and Instagram to actually monetize. Well, if you have a seven or eight figure business and it's based off of social media... Yeah. When it's down for an hour or a day, you're losing hundreds and hundreds right. of thousands of dollars. Forget the stock, Doug. Google. That's Google. Why are we looking at Google? No, Google. How much money did Facebook lose during the outage? Just look that up right here. So oh, here you go. Six billion in hours. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, that was uh, hundred million in lost online advertising sales, sales, Whoa. and five percent loss of their shares. Okay. Which is was it forty billion dollars from their market value? So okay, so this that's so fascinating to me. That's something like could get that big that like hours of it being shut down from it. You know what it reminds me of? You ever Did you ever read that? Like I remember there was a thing out for Michael Jordan back when Michael Jordan was like one of the highest paid athletes. And it talked about if, uh, and I've seen the same analogy for Bill Gates, I think, where if a $100 bill fell out of his pocket, that it would be a waste of his time to pick it up. 
meaning that he makes more money per second than the three seconds it would cost yeah. for him to bend down to pick it up. I know. Yeah. That's what that Gotta makes you those. think of. Like it's just they're making so much goddamn <laughs> money stats. that like you could be shut down for hours and your in your in your company loses hey. billions of dollars. Do you guys remember that episode of the Chappelle Show, one of the best comedy skits of all time, where he's pretending to be like a super rich. Uh, rapper, yeah, and uh, you know how was they always the, the Rick, Cribs J- the Rick James one. No, it wasn't it was a Cribs one. Yeah, yeah, uh, the and, Cribs one. And you know how they always trying to show off how rich they are. Uh-huh. And so like he goes in to make breakfast and he eats like it's a pterodactyl egg. Ball of shit, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I just wish I had my fish. Because yeah. <laughs> he's so rich, he eats the rare pterodactyl egg rich omelet. Bitch. Yeah, that was yeah. hilarious. Oh, I love that. But so, okay, so here's the other thing that's going on with Facebook and Instagram stuff. A whistleblower quote came out and said this woman worked for Facebook. Yeah, that's okay. That's what I read. That they were okay. sharing the data and stuff, right? What, no, what she was saying is that Facebook knows. A new internally, so their internal memos and internal studies mm. that they're aware of. So this is their own internal dialogue, where they know the damage that social media can create. So they know that it creates polarization, that it favors hateful or mean content, and that Instagram in particular uh, is damaging to teenage girls. Yet they continue to do business as usual anyway, and they kind of disregard that and just keep pushing forward. So this whistleblower is coming out saying they know the damage that they're doing, but they're keep running their business as usual. Yeah, but how is that any different than alcohol, cigarettes? Thank you. Yeah, so, I mean, how is that any different than anything else that that harms a lot of fucking people and they continue to do business? Well, so here's here's what yeah, I totally get slapped. And I had this conversation with some of my friends who are like, "Oh, Facebook and Instagram need to be regulated. This is terrible. They knew huh? it." And it's, yeah, I know. By the way, these are the same guys that complain about the corruption of the FDA. How about you just opt out? And the SEC. Okay, so here's what I, what I think people need to do, is that they need to pull the curtain back a little bit. What we're witnessing right now is the buildup to, this is what I think, this is my opinion, but I think I'm right, the buildup to legislation for heavy regulation or an agency that is going to be created specifically to monitor and regulate oh, social I see media. That. That's a good call. Mm. And the way that they do it I see that is they drum up public support by usually by angering and then people and then making people scared. I like mm-hmm. this prediction. And this is part of it. Yeah. Now, what this what I'm not saying is that social media is great and that Facebook is this virtuous company. No, no, no. I don't think any of that. I think they're bad, but I think it could be much worse and one of the ways you can make it much worse is by putting a federal well, government agency that in control this all leads to the social money. credit <laughs> system that uh, inevitably we're moving towards cuz you know it just looks like our government is antsy pantsy to having access to all that. They well, want it cuz it's powerful. Yeah. yeah, I well I think it's it's less of that even. I think it's just purely a money thing. We, we just said the numbers of what a few hours of this company makes. Imagine how easy it would be to con- to get a fraction of that money and from them by providing a service that is put in place, like you're saying, that is just there to regulate them. I mean, it could create thousands of jobs and you know millions and billions of dollars for the government. I mean, yeah. it's kind of a no-brainer. Is demonize the fuck out of them, make them seem that get all the get the public scared that oh my god, we need to put some regulations in place or backdoor then, the government into the company. Well, so so always pay attention when both sides of the aisle. Agree on something. <laughs> That's the scariest time. That's when it's scary, <laughs> yeah. because first you had. I, I remember there were there were several. Um, you know, they, they brought legislation forward several times now to regulate the internet, regulate social media, and it's gotten defeated because the public didn't support it. But little by little, the public is starting to support it. First, it starts with the the Democrats saying it's because of social media that Donald Trump won in 2016 and, you know, they're causing all this hate and blah, blah, blah. Then it's the Republicans saying, you guys are censoring us. You're controlling information. You're obviously, you know, there's a liberal, they'll say bias. Then the, then the, the liberals come out and the, de- the Democrats come out and say, because of you, people stormed the Capitol. And so what they're doing is they're pissing everybody off. They're yeah, pissing yeah, both yeah. sides off. Now they're bringing forth this person that's saying, hey, our company knows that it can cause damage 
they continue to do business as usual. By the way, this is most big corporations that yeah. you know sell a product or whatever. Yeah, are we are we going to stop? Like, meanwhile, I mean, nobody doesn't want it to stop because they know what a they powerful don't tool it is for their purposes. You yes, know? so they're just wedging it uh, against whatever Dude. everybody no, else bro- is going to get a- angry about, so that that way they can. It's a uh, brilliant call. Yeah, yeah. I hundred percent agree. However with you. bad it is now, it could be much worse. That's all I'm saying, and it, and it will get much worse if we put. Government regulators, if they go in and they start to control it, you better believe that public that government policy will make its way through social media and they'll use it because it's powerful. It's powerful marketing. It's the most mm-hmm. powerful marketing we've ever seen. So yep. as bad as it is, it'll get much worse. So okay, what, okay, yeah. So I have to bring this up and it's um, a bit on the conspiratorial side. <laughs> okay. I have to do it. I have to do it. You guys have been sitting on this. Uh, somebody sent me this and it's just a patent that's real. Uh, so if you go look into it, um, you know, you'll be able to find it. It's patent W O two zero two zero zero six zero six zero six. And this is uh, Microsoft well, a lot of sixes in there. I know, which Justin. is, <laughs> I mean, that should be, that should say a lot right there. <laughs> um, yeah. So it, the patents cryptocurrency system using body activity data. What is that? Uh, whoa, huh? Yeah. So let's speculate about what that might entail in terms of wait, wait, say know, that getting again. It, cryptocurrency. So getting some kind of uh, cryptocurrency um uh, being able to use that for body tracking data somehow. What the fuck? Yeah, so like Microsoft is is apparently you know working on this. So how I don't understand how. Does yeah, that yeah work I don't out? either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. So to, what's the, okay. Well, who's got a conspiracy? Oh, here, here, like you, they, want they have you want to start a conspiracy yeah. right now? <laughs> he's, like, he's like, it's connected. I just found this patent, this is, and I think I'm going to start yeah. a conspiracy right now. <laughs> <laughs> why would they want to track your body activity, and why are they going to tie that into cryptocurrency? Like, what, what kind of like, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, connection is there in terms of like paying? Uh, f- uh, like, w- how are they going to use that? I guess is my- well, you, you you tax like okay, people have have, have uh, theorized that we're going to get taxed for like our carbon usage and stuff like that. So imagine if you had yeah. some sort of a tracking system that tracks how much carbon I use or every like single some day. Some social credit system, and, like and then I'm auto- tra- okay, go ahead, and I'm automatically <laughs> taxed with this Bitcoin. Yeah. So it says, oh, you today, sir, used. 400 units of carbon, therefore you owe seven bitcoins or yeah. whatever. You know, like maybe that's, I mean, that's, I don't, that's, I don't know. Carbon tax, yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, I really think that that's, I mean, because everyone, the big scare is, is, is climate change next. Once we calm down with COVID and shit like that. And the, the next thing is to get, to get back on the, the climate change, freaking everybody out and carbon and how are we going to slow everybody down? And, I, I do believe that we're going to move in that direction where we'll get, we're going to get taxed for what oh, we yeah. use. They're already talking about taxing you in California for uh, how many miles you drive, regardless yeah. of the car. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so if you just drive X amount of miles, you'll get taxed for every single mile. Yeah, I'm wondering if it's some kind of deterrent for getting you to move around and be more mobile. like, uh, Or if it's – see, I didn't know if it was that or if it's like more of some kind of incentive where you're – you know, more, if it's fitness related somehow, like ha! you're moving, you know, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. Like you get some kind of like, uh, yeah, use that as some credit system so you can actually like a cure more like Bitcoin from it or something. What did that know. say, Doug? What's that? What do you got, Doug? Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have a diagram here. I think Andrew can put up on the uh, screen. People can try to figure it out. Um, yeah, I could read the whole thing, but I don't really know what no, it says. No, you know what? I, yeah, well, I had no idea. It was just like somebody sent this to me, and I'm like trying to figure it out. I thought maybe you guys had some ideas. Dude, I like my idea. No, you guys don't like that? I do, but let's crowdsource this. So okay. let's we'll post this up. Oh, yeah, our audience yeah. will be on top and, of it. And, and, we definitely YouTube. have enough conspiracy yes, people. Yes, and I want, I want the <laughs> best. We'll, get your tinfoil hats yeah. on. We'll pick the best theory. I like How about that? that? I yeah. like we'll that. pick the best theory, crowdsource it. Remind me, remind you know what, Andrew? We'll, remind we'll, we'll actually uh, we'll put this on the main IG. So I'm very curious about this, and I know we have some somebody who's like, bro, we got some smart ass. Yeah, no, we do. So are. when when uh, when this goes live, Connect we'll also put here. it up on yeah. the main IG so we can start Dude, to capture some of these. Well, speaking right. speaking of climate change, by the way, if you're if you're <laughs> at any you know if you want objective science or truth or whatever behind this. Just research the latest nuclear energy technology. Just look into it because if they really cared about climate change, this is what they would be pushing. They would be pushing 
the, the newest technology for nuclear energy. In terms which, of the cleanest way to do it, the it's, most cost effective. It's so clean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. It creates so much energy, it's ridiculous. And literally, literally, that right now could solve most of these issues. But nobody's talking about it because they don't, don't want a solution. They want a wedge and hmm. they want to push, either side wants to push their legislation. I started your foundation show last night. It was yeah, good. do you like it? Yeah, I only got one episode through, but it was enough to you know when I watched it the first Second time. Second one's even better. Really? Second episode. Yeah, yeah it, it got it started to hook me in towards the back, and it helped that you told me a little more about the story because I was and maybe that's what it was. I was so confused at the 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 son or the 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 you know he's the three, empire. Yeah, and, that he's yeah. three people in one type of deal. Are you, are you giving away like? Is no, this no, no, no. This no, is no, a, no, no. You probably it's, need to know this actually to watch it because I think that's what lost me. I'm like yeah. I don't understand this kid. This it's old really guy. interesting concept because it's like the most narcissistic like setup you possibly could have. Yeah. Right. So it's like your bloodline. It's it's basically a monarchy, but it's just you. Right. And so basically you're the one that, that is the empire of the entire universe and you repeat. So you see yourself being born again. Uh, your older self is part of your council. Yeah. Your younger self is, is you're teaching your younger self how to become an empire. Uh, it's it, kind of an fascinating. Emperor. It's yeah, I, but I did not understand it the first time I started watching because I was distracted and, and then I was like I stopped. I'm like I don't know what's going on. It sounds like a cannabis show. But Justin sure. kind of explained to me what was going on. I'm like, oh, okay, now it makes more sense and it is a lot more interesting. Mm -hmm. now. now I'm like, okay, now I'm intrigued by like this whole idea, dude. Speaking of uh, of cannabis, I got a hilarious story. So yeah, it, and mm -hmm. you know my my kids don't listen to the show, so and they will one day. Surprise. <laughs> Surprise. Surprise. Yeah. So uh, Jessica and I, the other night, were hanging out, and the kids are in their room, right, doing their thing, and, you know, the baby's asleep, and we're like, hey, let's let's uh, let's share a, a joint. You know, let's hang out and share a joint, right? So I'm like, let's go outside. You know, I, my, I have a 12-year-old and a 16-year-old. Like, you know, let's just go outside so the smell stays. She's like, no, it'll be fine. We'll go in the bathroom. We'll open the window. I'm like, all right, let's do that. <laughs> how, funny, so, how funny the circle of life, bro, right? <laughs> I feel like a, you're <laughs> hiding just, you're, oh, yeah, in the ooh, bathroom. Ooh. Yeah. You got any for breeze? Uh, exactly. I've done that. Like when I was yeah. a teenager, yeah, like yeah. trying to hide, right? Yeah, Same yeah. thing, right? So we're in there. We're doing the thing, hanging out. And then my, my, <laughs> doing the thing. my daughter texts us. Uh, Papa, I smell a bunch of smoke. What's going on? And then my son gets on there. Yeah, it's really strong. It's something's burning. <laughs> now, now because and, and you're paranoid too. Because <laughs> exactly. Oh no. Because we're paranoid. Jessica replies on accident. She just replies, "Oh fuck," <laughs> to the group text with my kid. <laughs> So I'm like, oh my God, well, no, what do we do? Uh, so I like go outside, go out there and I'm pretending like I'm looking for the, I don't know. Let me yeah. find out where that <laughs> Where's this coming from? Yeah. Uh. I go outside. Oh, yeah. it smells like someone was smoking outside. I think we're okay. Because when she said, oh, fuck, it only scared my kids. Like, uh oh, yeah. is there a fire? Yeah. yeah. Now the oh, good news goodness. is, here's That's the good hilarious. news. My kids have no idea what weed smells like. You think that? I just think mm. I don't believe that. I don't I, believe your I don't high school that, son. Even my older not, kid knows. He's like, it's like, it's skunky, you know? Yeah, there's I know. Yeah, well, you live in Santa Cruz, so it's probably, yeah, it's, it's like mandatory dude. kids know. Well, knowing, I know. You're in Santa Cruz. I actually taught him, like, he's smells Yeah, I was going to say, they probably, you know, probably I, see the no, plants. No, 100% my son would have said, oh, it smells like weed. Like, really? Yeah, he would, but he doesn't know. Obviously, they don't know. So really? part of me was kind of like, cool. I don't know, dude. Your son's really huh. smart. He seems, you know what? He's so smart. And this is where I think you're naive because <laughs> he is literally you. <laughs> and you would not lead on to your parents that you knew. Right. You would play them. Because you don't want them to know. That's that right. Yeah. yeah. How could you not see I, that with your son? I, I think you so. You guys right, could Adam. thank you, right? It's yeah. his son, yeah, I, not I, I him. I totally agree. And is he not? I mean, that. dude, your son is so smart yeah. that when Jessica and him have a disagreement, the little fucker writes a fucking letter to her. Yeah. Like, like and like just I've seen him. They're like perfect. Yeah, he knows yeah. what he's doing. Yeah, he's not a he's damn. not a your average yeah. teenage boy, dude. Damn. And so if you've you been think, played. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're getting played, well, dude. Well, right you now. went outside. He probably grabs. You know, he's stash. like, yeah, he's yeah. probably toking it at the same <laughs> no, time. He's no, like, no, oh, no, good no. time. Yeah, dad. Dad's smoking right now, <laughs> I so I heard there's high. some smell outside. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's like, hey, he's all, it's weird. It smells like Girl Scout cook. I mean, smoke. Yeah, it smells like smoke. Yeah, it smells like OG Kush. I had a similar thing, but it was completely different different uh issue right so like me and courtney were having sex and <laughs> we were, you know it was like getting into it whatever 
and uh, things were moving. The bed's moving, slam against the wall. So we woke everybody up, and like, and, and I literally just like had to just cover myself and then address it in like <laughs> with the blankets on. And I'm like, everything's cool, we're fine. Like nothing's right. Like Whoa, I heard, somebody's knocking on the walls, Dad. And then, like, everybody's like paranoid and you know scared because we're in this new place and like it's still kind of like there's unrest. Dude, you know? I just I just pictured Justin how violent he is. <laughs> I know. Go 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 go. <laughs> Dude, there's no violence. It's just like no way you can play it off either. You know what I'm saying? It's like, are you sure you guys are like, yes, you guys like my it. picture frames were falling off my yeah. bedroom? Yeah. I just know what how yeah, Justin is. I just know how Justin is when he's working out. I'm just like, oh my God. Oh, it's not the same, yeah. dude. No, I don't know. That quote's pretty good. I love it. How you do anything is how you do everything, uh, man. I feel yeah. like <laughs> Yeah. 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 Uh, with perfection. If how you work out and eat is any indication at all. Yeah. By the way, how did uh, is Courtney's uh, hip Passion. surgery scheduled? Or? Yeah, yeah. She's, <laughs> she's recovering right What's now. Going, yeah, that's the that's the worst. It's like you, you go through a period as a kid where you have to be quiet, and then you're an adult. You don't have kids. You're like, I can fucking do whatever I want. And then you have yeah. your own kids. You're like, oh, it's back to where it was before. Yeah, yeah. I gotta hide everything. So. I mean, I'm already like, I mean, I'm really careful now because originally I think I told I think I told the audience that I was gonna try and not smoke, which that was a terrible idea. And I, <laughs> you lost. I was, didn't last long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, was, I yeah, I just don't. You know, I and I've been doing the edible thing because ever since COVID, I haven't been the same. I just don't. I know you guys like the edibles. It just yeah, it's such a them. different feeling to me. It is. It's it's different. I don't like how long it takes to hit. I hate how long it lasts. Like mm. I just prefer something that I can control, and it's a shorter you know, it's window. A, it's a different form of uh, THC. Your your liver yeah, it converts converts yeah. it to a different form. Yeah, I mean it's obvious. It's That's very obvious. I like to it me. more. It's, yeah. it's not. It's not the same feel. And it's not to say that like the right setting. Like if we're doing something, all of us, and we're like, hey, it'd be a funny move. Yeah. We're playing cards or something. We're like, hey, let's all get an edible and yeah, have fun. Yeah. Like, but for myself, for the reasons that I use it at night to kind of like say it's my glass of wine right it's like literally a couple just for i feel myself calm down and the edible just does not do see, that. see i'm the opposite um i i, I can they get more paranoid when i smoke yes i can smoke a little bit but it, it's got to be mild and unfortunately every strain now at the dispensary is like 17 or 18 percent minimum yeah so i have to like search and find something that's like nine percent yeah. And and then also, if I'm going to get paranoid, it's usually with smoke. Now, I, I can definitely get paranoid with edible, but it's easy to control because I can see the dose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I like a low dose of THC if I do use it, and it's just a very mild, you know, uplifting kind of feeling. My cousin yeah. brought me over these things. You know, it's so cool to watch the the evolution of it because now it's like in the open, yeah. legal, a bunch of places. And so how, you know, the response from consumers and what they want and like... Uh, I've always wanted this and no one's ever made it until now. They have, they make, cause I, I've told you guys, right? So like Katrina will roll me a joint. Though that same joint will last me all week long, but it's not as fresh when it's, when it's like that. Right. But it's, I only take a couple hits off of it. So it lasts the whole week. Mm -hmm. So they actually make these little, these little tiny, like literally like, I don't know, six hitters or whatever. Oh yeah, that's what I use. Oh, you have little joints like that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've never seen those before. Yeah. Yeah. The filters on them and everything, you little know, tiny mini you know cone what else joints. They have, they have uh, these containers that are, that you vacuum seal. So you could put your joint in there and then you pump all the air out and what? it'll keep so it. You can keep it without it being what? all stinky. Yeah. Really? It'll, it'll keep it fresher. Wow. I'm so disconnected yeah. from the space. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I always knew like everything that was like on the front end. I just don't go to these clubs or anything. So I'm, I'm, I've been so removed that I don't see any of this stuff. Yeah. So, oh, dude, speaking of space, are you guys watching this new arms race that's happening between the U.S. and Russia? No, no. These hypersonic oh, the missiles. Hypersonic missiles, yeah. Hypersonic missiles that were there were all were launching <laughs> to kind of. I don't know. It's, it's becoming like another like arms. They're race. unstoppable missiles. They're R so fast. Yeah. So like it, we're talking like 30, 40 times the speed of sound. Yeah. That these missiles are going. So the U.S. just, I guess showed that we have one that I think goes like 30 times the speed of sound and it uses compress it uses the air around it and compresses it and uses it as a propellant dude but think about that 30 times the speed of sound for a missile you basically what? can't do anything in the heck isn't that wild yeah you're creating like a meteor yeah. Yes. Like, what happens that like that slams into the earth? Like, how big is that explosion? Well, there's all there's also, and I don't, you know, we don't know if they already have this or not. They, this is something that they've talked about for a while, where they could put tungsten steel rods. So tungsten steel is extremely dense, extremely hard, extremely heavy, 
and you launch them from space, so from a satellite, and it there's no warhead on it. So there's no explosive or nothing, but it, because just it's traveling- steel rods coming out or Just what? one <clears throat> rod, one big heavy rod. Because it's traveling so fast, yeah. and because it's so heavy, the kinetic energy alone is like a small nuke. Yeah. Wow. So you could fire it from space, and it's cheap because there's no propellant, no nothing. There, they call it. Yeah, it's pretty alarming stuff. They call it rods from God. Oh my God! <laughs> wow. How There's a rod right? from God. I like how they call it God, like God, you know, rod from Satan, I guess. Yeah, right. But if that hits, it it explodes with force. That's just absolutely insane. What, how many? How much? How many billions of dollars well, has gone God. into? Making all this stuff. And wasn't and, space exploration originally supposed to bring us all together? No. And like, we're all hanging out, you know, in these space stations. No, now it's like, you know, how many of these satellites can I smash up here and, like, you know, develop these crazy-ass weapons that could destroy us all? The, they, they said that because they got a lot of tax money going to it, but it was always about yeah. arms and, and weapons. I mean, that's Whoever what it always can, ends up being, right? That's 100% yeah. what it's all about. All right, I'm going to go and I'm going to take a more positive turn. So. <laughs> <laughs> We're all going to die. I've been using, did I tell you guys I've been using Caldera on my son? No. Did I tell you guys? No, no. Okay, so. Aurelius? Yeah. I, I've heard like some people report uh, using it on their hands and, and having like incredible results. Well, so Adam was the first one to say that it helps his psoriasis. <clears throat> then because of that, we've gotten all these messages from mm -hmm. people who have skin conditions. I get them a lot. I actually don't even talk about it all the time. And they show. say it really helps. Oh, yeah. Now, it's not a medical product, so you'd have to test it yourself to see if it works. But I that by the way, that one picture that we shared was 10 days, not 10 weeks. 10 days. 10 days that guy's hands went from the way they looked in the before to after wow. Wow. of using it. So my son has a slight intolerance to eggs. And I think I told you guys, we're, the doctor encouraged us to give him a tiny bit mm -hmm. every single mm -hmm. day just to, to keep his immune system from becoming hyperactive. But because of this, and we think it's because of this, he gets a little bit of dry skin like in the crease of his ear mm. and it'll itch and he'll like scratch it and stuff. And so at first I was like, maybe I should put some Vaseline on it to keep oh, it more. Great moist. idea. Just put the I did. I started using the Caldera. Oh, wow. And it's been, I've been using it now for a week and I see improvement. Oh, yeah. That shit's nice. amazing, dude. It is. It really is amazing. I, I use it on, I use it more now than the the cream that I was prescribed. It just I it, because it's all natural and I feel like it actually works as good as like the steroid cream that they've given me before. Yeah, and right, steroids have all kinds of steroids. Yeah, like, yeah. So I'm mm -hmm. always trying not to use that. I only use the steroid cream when it's like really, really bad for me, but which, by the way, it's wild to me that the after COVID, like uh, I, my psoriasis was so bad, and it still hasn't like completely uh, resolved or got back to where it was before. So I've been reading about m there's more and more studies now on long COVID mm -hmm. and its effects. So here's what they say: initially, when you get COVID, the virus is active in your body in your system, but then the virus is gone, and what's left over are fragments that cause this immune reaction in the body, and then that's what causes a lot of problems. Yeah, is your own immune system. That's why they say some of these treatments for COVID that they're testing have to be done in the beginning, because after the virus is already gone, now at that point it's not going to do anything to attack the actual virus. You have to then control your own immune system. Oh, so really, so because your immune system became hyperactive and because psoriasis is a kind of an autoimmune issue, yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, it, it's it's very obvious too because when I one of the things that actually helps the psoriasis more than anything is like if I do fast. Or if I do like a, you know, like a fasting mimicking diet where I'm like yeah. 500 cal, like really, really low. And because we were sick and not feeling good, nothing tastes good. Everything was bland. Like I was super low calorie for a long period of time. And <clears throat> even when I came out and was like my taste came back, I still didn't have a much of an appetite. So I was really, really low calorie. Diet was good. What I was, The foods that I was eating and my psoriasis was just off the chain. It yeah. was like I was eating ice cream and candy every day and eating burgers and cheese. Like, like I was totally doing all the worst things I could do. That's how bad it was. It was worse than what it was when my diet is completely to shit. That's how much it affected Interesting. my, yeah, my autoimmune stuff. Interesting. Yeah, Isn't that strange how so many people have such different yeah. reactions? <clears throat> I do feel like my, my lung capacity is getting better, Oh, good. but it does still feel off. But I think a lot of that too is just because I, I, because it's been affected, I haven't done a lot of, I haven't mm -hmm. pushed my Myself cardiovascular either, so there's a little bit of that too, yeah. right? So I think I'm just kind of out of it. It's not feeling like it was before, where I felt the pressure so much. I think now I'm just deconditioned because I haven't been doing it. Mm -hmm. Now the much. fatigue is is getting better. Yeah, the fatigue's yeah. definitely that's gone. I don't have that anymore. That lasted for a while, almost a month after COVID, where 
Um, yeah, I would just if I had like a semi-active day. Dude, you know what's funny is that Adam was the most blasé about COVID, I know, right? I know. Like, like whatever. Uh, <laughs> now that he's had it, I was and, like, I want it. Give it to me. Yeah, yeah, now that he's yeah, had yeah, it yeah. and it lasted Breathe for so long, face. we had a, an employee call in and say, "Oh, I got exposed to COVID. I can't come in." And Adam's like, w w "When? When's the last time we saw him? Who did you see the guy?" I'm like, <laughs> yeah. "Why are you worried, yeah. bro? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you don't want that again, do you?" Yeah. <laughs> oh. No, no. Now you're gonna get everybody DMing me again. No, no by the way, we we were not exposed. The guy. The guy was exposed outside of work before yeah, we saw. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, after yeah. we already saw him. So, I, you said that you know people that have actually got it twice. Yeah, I don't know anybody yes. yet that has. So, yeah, I, I know people that uh, speculate, but I don't know anybody that's. But been was tested it twice. the same variant? No, or was it a different? Unlikely, variant? unlikely. It was, yeah, yeah, two different variants. But I also have a. I also uh, have a friend that. Oh, we know this person. I don't want to say their name because I don't know if they want us to say it. They got COVID, tested positive, mm -hmm. recovered from it, went and got tested for antibodies, and has none. Oh yeah. Some people Yeah, that's that's annoying. Some people don't develop antibodies after having it or even with the vaccine mm. won't develop <clears throat> antibodies. Really weird. Now is or there a possible not error in that that the they test? just I was going to say is, yeah, it, is that possible be... too though that well, they, they only have test, them and they don't They only test a certain type of antibody. Yeah, um, they might not be yeah. There's also like T cell, uh, you know, uh, memory that's different they don't test for. I'm going to go get to, by the way, I'm going to go get tested for antibodies just to see. Nice. Where are you going to do that? Lab core? Lab core. Oh, okay. Yeah, you just go and they'll test your antibodies. Um, I mean, tell me when you do it. Maybe I'll, I'm just curious. Me too. Yeah. Me too. I want to see where who, I'm at. Which one of our friends, was it Paul Saladino or someone who, who's been doing that? So one of our friends that got it, he's he's been like testing his, his oh, I don't know. antibodies and like seeing how long he lasts. I can't remember who it was. I thought it was Paul. Yeah, no idea. You know, he got completely wiped out. Did you see that? His Instagram, they never gave it back to him. I know. He had a re, he's been rebuilding it. So wow. He was, uh, I don't remember where he was, Dude, he was I, talking too much about COVID yeah, stuff. I, I called Quarter it a million or half million. I called it the too. second social media started acting like an editor. <clears throat> that's the, when they open themselves up to all this. Now they're, they're going to be hated. What they could have done is they could have acted like the phone company where they're like, put up whatever you guys regulate it yourself. The users can market if they want to decide what they want to watch, what they don't want to watch. But once they started to edit, now they're, and I knew it. They're gonna they're gonna get regulated at some point. They're gonna make a case for it. Isn't it already kind of regulated in the U.S. different than it is in other countries? Like I, I, I they're protected like phone companies are currently. But because <clears throat> now there's a case that they shouldn't be like a phone company like AT and T. You and I get on the call get on a call together and plan a bank robbery. Right. AT and T cannot be held accountable. Right. But if AT and T is editing calls and allowing some and not others, right. well now yeah you can be held liable. Yeah. So the social media companies are currently being regulated like phone companies. However, because they're starting, they're editing. Obviously, that's opening them up to potential regulation, or at least making the case. Uh, and that's what they're trying to do. So, hey, I hope you're enjoying the show. Head over to one of our partners, Serenity Kids. Now they make food for babies and for kids that is extremely healthy. I'm talking about grass-fed meats, grain-free puffs products that have bone broth, good protein and fat content, all health. It's literally the healthiest baby food and kids food that I've seen anywhere. It's the only product, processed product or packaged product that I give my 11-month-old son. And right now they have pumpkin spice puffs. These are grain-free and they're infused with bone broth that you can give your baby. It dissolves in their mouth, so it's really fun and safe to feed them as a little snack. Go check them out. Head over to My Serenity Kids. Dot com and then use the code MP20, MP20 for 20% off your order. All right, here's the rest of the show. First question is from Nicholas Costa, 3517. Does cardio kill muscle gains? Okay, we got to clear this up. Kill. We still get this, and I and I believe that a lot of the pro and anti cardio rhetoric that's, question. that's happening now um, in the fitness space is maybe kind of connected to how we talk about it. So first off, I want to be very clear: there's health benefits to any form of activity so long as it's applied appropriately. Now, depending on your goal, you can apply some forms of activity in ways that might be counter to your goal. Or in ways that will be pro your goal. So cardio can be either pro muscle gain or anti muscle gain. Here's where it can be pro muscle gain. Does it improve your health and does it improve your capacity to do resistance training? So let's say all you ever do is lift weights and you do heavy sets and low reps and that's how you like to train and your stamina is really preventing you from training in ways where you can increase your work capacity to give the kind of volume that maybe your body would need to propel you any further. In that sense, 
some cardio will help you. Mm-hmm. It, it definitely will. It, doing some cardio, improve your capacity, your work capacity could help you build more muscle. Now, how can it hurt when you're, you're, com- when you're sending competing signals? When I'm training for lots and lots of endurance and I'm training for lots and lots of strength and muscle, well, now I'm going to get a little of both and not a lot of either. That's when it can kill. And our big problem really is when pe- number one goal people have with working out is to get leaner, right? Body composition uh, changes um, is the number one goal. And the problem is when people make cardio the cornerstone of their routine for fat loss. It's a terrible it's, strategy. It's just a terrible strategy. That's the thing that we tend to talk about. That's all it is. That's the period. That's it. It's just when I think back to all the clients that I trained that were coming in for fat loss, their strategy with cardio was terrible. And it doesn't mean that we never did cardio. It just means that when they first got back into their routine, because there's this idea of, okay, if I want to lose, there's, I don't know anybody. If you were to take a room of 10 people that are not fitness fanatics, like people that probably listen to our show and say, hey, if you needed to lose weight, okay, you need to lose 20 pounds as fast as you can. Yeah, what form of what would you, what would you do? Uh-huh. And they would say, oh, well, I would stop eating this or I'd st- stop eating this or cut my calories. They know there's reduce their calories. And they'd say, and I would do cardio. Literally. Mm-hmm. I guarantee that 99% of them would, yep. s- would say that. And the truth is, that is a terrible strategy for almost anybody who's getting started on their fat loss journey. I am not speaking to somebody who's consistent and been working out for 10 years and doesn't miss and has, hits their protein intake and has a healthy amount of calories they're consuming, 2,500 to 3,000 a day, and they're in a great place. And I'm saying, don't do cardio. No, that's, I'm not talking to that person. I'm talking to the majority of people that are coming in that are looking for fat loss. Starting off with cardio is a terrible yeah. strategy. And I'll take it even further. You take that group of people, and we can even make it a little bit more complex and say, here's three different or four different forms of exercise. Rank them in order in terms of which one's going to help you burn body fat the most. Lifting weights or resistance training, most people would rank at the bottom. The truth is, it's at the top. It speeds up your metabolism, and it results in pure fat loss, not muscle loss, and it gives you better long-term results. That's it. There is no demonizing cardio here. It's yeah. just it's people are tend to use it wrong. They tend to use the wrong tool mm-hmm. for the goal that they have. But now the, the question is, does it kill muscle gains? Well, if you're doing if the cardio signal that you're sending is out competing the muscle building signal, yeah. then yes, it will. But if you're doing car, if your number one goal is to build muscle, and you do cardio in a way to augment that, now how, what does that look like? For me, it looks like higher rep sets, supersets pushing the sled, maybe even some sprints here and there, that would help augment or accelerate or at least uh, amplify how my workouts are in terms of muscle building. That's what that would look like. But if I'm doing like long distance running and cycling right. and, you know, well, I think there's a difference there when you, when you look at like the different types of cardio that you're introducing. And I do subscribe to that work capacity increase of really fueling into, you know, new muscle gains. If you're seriously stuck in that low rep range and you don't have the sort of endurance to, to get through like high rest, but, uh, working through those sets, uh, with, with higher reps, uh, specifically too, like that's going to build up your endurance and have that effect, which in in a sense is a cardiovascular experience uh it's just mm-hmm. not like the traditional sense that people uh you know you know attribute it towards so uh in, in terms of like just staying overall healthy and like including movement and activity uh, in your day that's that's at the utmost priority but you know like in like how you structure that does uh, make a, a massive difference yeah, it, in how your people, physique is. People just think it's a faster way to get to their results, and it's not. That's mm-hmm. it's just a mistake. It's not a faster way to get leaner. It's not. It, it and especially if you don't have everything dialed in nutritionally, like if you're not feeding the body adequate calories and macros that it needs, and then in addition to that, you're also pushing excessively mm-hmm. on cardio you're not going to build muscle. You're definitely not going to build muscle that way. And you're going to initially lose some fat, but eventually we'll hit a plateau and then you're in a really shitty place. Mm -hmm. You're super low calorie, you're moving like crazy and your body's not changing anymore. Yeah. Now to be clear, the perfect, and of course this is different from person to person, but generally speaking, the perfect routine for overall health and wellness and quality of life has a strength building and muscle building component, a cardiovascular component, and a mobility flexibility component. Now, this isn't 
but also, of course, you want to have a spiritual component and you want to have good sleep and all that stuff. But in terms of working out, those three components would be part of a routine for overall health uh, and longevity. And that's just the bottom line. Now, there's different, there's individual variances and you could value muscle and strength more than the, you know, mobility and flexibility or more than the cardio or vice versa. That, of course, you want to take into account. But yeah, this, this, uh, this label that, you know, we may be anti-cardio, we're not. We're anti doing things the wrong way for whatever your goal is. And that's what we're always going to talk about. Next question is from Chris FTW8. Besides saving time, what are the benefits of supersets? Oh man, strength endurance. Mm. Strength endurance is the main one. So there's 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 low rep strength, maximal strength, and the strength endurance. Bodybuilders tend to have this. You know, you get a power lifter and a bodybuilder working out together, and when it comes to the heavy weight, the bodybuilders, uh, excuse me, the power lifter is going to outperform them typically. Once they get into sets and reps, and then you'll see the the bodybuilders start to outperform because of the strength endurance, um, the pump. Is another one. Oh, yeah. I love the pump. The supersets really amplify that. It's one of my favorite effects. That's a really weird one for me because, like, I didn't realize. Like, I remember working out with Adam even when I uh, was just doing my normal sort of strength routine that was like low reps, and then doing uh, these supersets. Just f- this feeling of almost engorged, like tightness. Like I couldn't like keep going because the pump was so. In, intense because it wasn't something I ever focused on to where it actually limited, uh, you know, any more reps that I could do. And that, that just like blew my mind. It was my strategy to level the playing field. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I mean, we, this is actually some of the other benefits of this is the last question. Uh, this is another great way for you to build some cardiovascular endurance. It's True. not going to compete with marathon running if you're trying to get cardiovascular endurance, but this is one of the ways that you can get some of the, that's what's beautiful about weight training mm-hmm. is that you can do things like supersets and triceps and shorten the rest periods and watch how your heart starts beating. And th- I mean, that's how you strengthen your heart. Mm-hmm. So there's, there's ways that you can get cardiovascular benefits through strength training. The opposite is not true. Yeah. Now another, another benefit of supersets is, uh, to focus on a muscle that you may not necessarily be connecting to well in compound movements. For example, maybe you do barbell rows and you feel it more in your arms than you do in your back. One way you can do a superset is you can do an isolation movement for your lats and then move to the barbell rows. It's called a pre-exhaust. It allows you to feel that muscle more, right? You could do this for chest too, like flies before a press. Or maybe your glutes in a squat. You could do a hip thrust right before a squat. Or you could do it for your quads, a sissy squat or a leg extension before a squat. So you could also do this. Another way you could do a superset is to just, in terms of increasing the value, or I should say the the, the quality of the workout experience, right? So let's not let's all not discredit the experience of the workout. We all love certain feelings. There's definitely value in that, whether it benefits your physical body or not. There's certain things I do just because I love the way they feel. I love supersetting opposing muscle groups. There is no better feeling than having your chest and your back pumped at the same time or your biceps and your triceps pumped at the same time. So I like to do that sometimes where I'll do a superset chest and back exercise or a bicep and tricep exercise just for the experience, improving the quality of the experience. Next question is from Claymation14. How important is it to follow a program? Can you just improvise your sessions and do more instinctive training and still see progress? Yeah. What's that saying? Know thyself, right? Was that quote, oh. right? Mm. You got to know yourself a little bit before you can decide this. Like, and most people fall in this category. You're going to tend to do the stuff that you like. You're going to you're gonna tend- trick yourself. Yeah. You're going to avoid the stuff that you don't like. I think we're guilty of this. Of Even course, with yeah. all of our experience, knowledge, yes. and, and the points you're about to make, I think that- it's uh, it's it's just human nature to do that, and so you've got to be really self aware um, that you're probably doing these things. And I mean, and I know that I'm, I train intuitively, but I know that every time I follow a program strictly, I always benefit from it yeah. because it's you, written down. You yeah, gotta do it. even as well, as, even though I know I have these tendencies and I try and be uh, aware and change and. It still doesn't matter when when I follow a program, I always get better results. Yeah. So what, what I like to do for myself is because I've trained so long, so there's an instinctive or intuitive component that I like to implement. But knowing myself, there's certain things that I tend to avoid, like high rep, lower body work in particular, or mobility work. And so then what I'll do with my program is I'll write those aspects in. 
So I'll, it'll be open in terms of what I can do within the workout, but I'll say to myself, for the next six weeks or five weeks, I'm not going any lower than 15 reps for lower bodies. Mm. That way, it's that's the part of the program that I'll write for myself. Now, what I do in the program, what exercise I choose, that's totally free. But that's the component I'll write down because that's the component, for me at least, that I screw up on. I also think it's important to uh, decipher whether you are training or exercising. Because if you're exercising, this is fine. If you, if you Because tr- the difference between training and exercise, True. training is you are, you're training towards a goal. Specific. I want to lose weight. I want to build muscle. You have a, I want to get faster, jump higher. You have a specific goal. You're training. You're, you're not going to beat that with by the person who's following a program. You're yeah. always going to do better if you, you follow a program. But if your goal is just to be healthy and you, you choose strength training as your main mode to stay healthy and exercise, there's nothing wrong with this. Well, Intuitively yeah. train because it doesn't matter if you don't you know, progress a little bit more in muscle or strength one week or not, you're still getting tons of benefits just from the exercise. So it really does matter what your goal is here. If you're trying to get to a destination, training program, 100%. If you are just exercising, then this is totally fine. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what I was going to bring up in terms of being in, in, in sort of a maintenance phase or, yeah, you're just focusing on your own health and listening to your body and what your body needs are uh, I think there's a definite good place for like training intuitively and you know it's something that I operate uh, you know more these days than I have in the past but also I know that I need to also implement a good program at some point in order to to push me a bit and to get me outside of my comfort zone uh, because you do get into those patterns and it just becomes one of those things where now I'm just kind of spinning my tires. Nothing's really happening. I need to get outside of that by really being more structured. Yeah, I, I'd say most people benefit from a structured program. I would say But all. if you've been working out for a long time on your own and you've been consistent, and when I say long time, that means years, not like, oh, six months I've been consistent. It's, you're looking at two, three, four years at least. That's when you can start to really figure yourself out, know your body, and be more intuitive. But even then, you'll benefit from having. Some yeah, structure. I mean, would you would you deny? I mean, will you as ex- you're the most experienced person in this room when it comes to weightlifting, and just as and most knowledgeable. No, about I just it. said I I, I do that for myself. Otherwise, yeah. I start to gravitate towards. You know, avoiding the shit that I don't like. Yeah, but there's nothing wrong again with the intuitive. I mean, if you're not trying to make major moves, then and you're training because you do it for the mental health and you and you want to feel good and you know it strengthens your heart and it keeps you fit. Like, there's nothing wrong. In fact, I think I mean that's where I'm at right now, right? Like, I I just got done saying how much I benefit from following a program. Yet I'm not following a program. I'm more like intuitive training right Right. now. But I also don't have major goals right now. I'm not trying to add a bunch of muscle, burn a bunch of body fat. I'm just trying to kind of maintain. Next question is from Jenny Chapman, 356. Can you speak to how fitness isn't selfish? As a mom, I really struggle with this. Yeah, this is a big challenge for- Hey, it can be. For parents, especially moms. It can be, though. Okay, depends how you use fitness. Are you using it to escape, Mm. or are you using it to improve yourself and make you- And include others. Right, and and better at what you do. So, you know that saying, you can't pour from an empty cup? Mm -hmm. If you're unhealthy, if you're not fit, uh, you are not going to be as effective as a mom or as an employee or as a partner because, I mean, look, if you feel like crap, you're just not as good at handling bad and stressful situations. You're- you're probably more likely to self-medicate with other things. You're you're not going to be your best self. You're the best version of yourself. A fit and healthy you is the best everything else that you could possibly do because you're fit and healthy. It doesn't guarantee that. It just means you're in a position to be even better at those things. But if you work out to avoid an escape, you know, if you're like, oh, sorry, got to go work out again. Sorry, got to work out again. And you're yeah. doing this because you don't want to be around your husband or you don't want to deal with your kids. And, and, and I, I get there's a natural component to this, by the way. A little bit of that is totally normal. Like we all do this where we're like, I got to get out of the house for a second. I get that. Mm-hmm. But if it's this chronic thing, then then yeah, it could definitely become selfish. But again, if you're doing it to make yourself healthier, it's an investment in everything. You know, like I, I don't, I, you know, I don't want a partner who doesn't take care of their health because I know how much worse that's going to make everything else um it it just it just is it's a fact so fitness done right in a healthy way is not selfish at yeah, all it's all the the mentality going into it and the psychology behind it like if you're in it to 
better yourself and to improve and, and to grow and, and to, to make sure that you have that kind of energy and stamina to play with your kids and to, uh, you know, be chipper and lively around your family and friends. Like it benefits all those things, but there's a structure behind mm -hmm. that that you need to consider. And, you know, it can, it can get to a point where we focus on the wrong things where like, you know, it's all body focused or it's all like, uh, uh, you know, the aesthetics and it's, it's all just like, I'm not getting this and I hate my body because it, it feels flabby here. And, you know, it became, it becomes this like, um, obsession. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's something that, uh, you know, can, can happen. And so you could see how that would become like a selfish endeavor once we start focusing on those things versus like how to, you know, really improve all the other aspects. I, I mean, I think when you look at the social media landscape, I would actually make the case that a majority of the people, fitness influencers out there are actually selfishly motivated. Mm. Yeah. So, um, although I think it's important, well, I want to part- insecurity driven, isn't That's it? That's right. Mm -hmm. So I think what you have to be very aware on if it's, because you're like, we talked about that study, or right, right, that we're, you could take a whole week off straight in your training routine and get just as good of results as the person who trains every single mm -hmm. day. So if it, if there is this, you know, oh, I've built this routine, I never miss, I go five days a week and I this time and you have that and your wife or your husband tells you like, hey, you know, honey, I want to talk to you, you know, have dinner, some things have been on my mind, this and that. Oh, that's. Yeah, can you do it another time? Because this is the, yeah. my, that's my time of working out. Or your kid has a baseball game. That's right. Kid, yeah. exactly. If you if you start making these decisions that sacrifice other parts of health, uh, in pursuit of what you what you call your your health goals with fitness, but is really driven because of your insecurities mm -hmm. about your body, mm -hmm. um, it can be very selfish. And yeah. so, and I, I mean, I saw this in competing. Uh, I, I think that was uh, competing was one of the most selfish things that I ever done in in my life. Uh, it, it, my whole life revolved around my, my food choices, my training times, my sleep, and I made everybody else around me adapt, you know, so that's very selfish. So I think there's, there's definitely a balance here, but I also think it can be very unselfish to not take care of yourself. So not taking care of yourself can be very selfish in, in comparison to being there for your partner. You already said it, Sal, that when you are healthy, you're a, a better husband, you're a better father, you're you're just a better person, a better employee, a better boss. Like so, it can be very selfish to not. So there's this fine dance between the two of them. Yeah, I know. I know. For me, the you know, and this is just something I'm more aware of now more than ever. The mental benefit for me is probably the most important. I think I am and. Because I've been exercising for so long, consistently, I've done a really good job of treating myself naturally for things like anxiety and depression, which I think I might be prone to. I think this is something that might actually uh, might have issues to these ups and downs. And regular exercise is really good for me in that particular sense. So, and I know when I miss, and I miss for a few days, I start to feel these kind of mental effects. So it's real important. But the challenge is exactly what you're saying, Adam. Is is this more of a selfish thing or is this benefiting me? I mean, I, I just recently had an issue with this because the place that we live in now, you know, I, I would work out in the garage in the early morning, but the garage is literally right underneath the baby's room and I'd wake him up. And so, you know, Jessica's like, you can't, if you work out in the morning, he's going to wake up. And I, I struggle with this, pissed off. No, I, I, I'll do it quietly. I'll do it. But I had to like, I had to accept it. Like, it's true. Like, I'm going to wake him up. And so I got to find an alternative. And so what I do is I, you know, you guys see me, I scram over here and I do an hour workout in 35 minutes some weeks when that's just the way it's going to have to be. Mm. But that was tough for me. That was tough for me because there's a selfish component too, which is like, oh, I got to get, you know, it's got to be my workout. So this depends, this depends. Mm -hmm. But I tell you what, if you have a really good partner that you trust and they say to you, hey, your workouts are starting to become a little selfish as hard as that is to hear, you might need to kind of consider that maybe they're telling you the truth, you know, yeah. consider that. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with so many fitness and health goals. We wrote them for free to benefit our audience. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpsalon. Adam is at mindpumpadam.